What's up everybody? Today I'm going to retouch a photo and I'm going to share my workflow with you. Click the subscribe button and enable the notification with the bell icon so you won't miss any future videos. So for today's tutorial I'm going to use Lightroom, I'm not going to use Photoshop and uh, I'm looking at a catalog of photos I've taken for a client in London. Now I'm already going to add and done some rating and picking and selection and so here I have some photos I want to work on. Uh, today I'm going to focus on this one. Um, I can already tell you that the photo is uh, well underexposed. I reckon one 1.5 stops and then uh, it's you know the horizon the horizon is creaked so we need to fix that one. Uh, so let's jump into it. Right first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that the profile is set to the camera portrait profile. Then uh, I'm gonna fix the white balance and I have two options here. Well, three actually. I could do automatic and let Lightroom do its things. In this case, the photo comes out too warm, so I don't really like it. The second option is to target this Adidas logo, which is supposed to be white, and see what happens. It's still too warm. The third option I have is to target the model eye. And that is, that is looking much better. Maybe I can go to, let's see how that works. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Something like that. Yeah. And the, for the tint, I'm probably gonna go away from uh, the greens. A touch, yeah. Then first thing first is I want to fix this horizon because it really bothers me and I'm using the guidelines and I want to line up this part of the bench with the guidelines and that should be eyeballed right about there. Fine. Now by doing so I'm losing the tip of the right hand, uh, the model's right hand but it doesn't really bother me at this stage because I'm gonna use some vignetting and this part is out of focus anyway. So I don't think it's gonna look so evident. Um, right, so exposure. We said one, 1.5. Let's try with 1.5. It's definitely too much. I'm gonna back off a touch like so. I'm gonna remove some contrast, not a lot. I'm gonna recover the highlights. I'm gonna open up some shadows and all this, I don't really have a rule for these numbers. It's just, you know, I'm eyeballing live now. Now for the whites, press Alt option. And as you drag the slider, you will see which whites are going to be uh, blown out. Same thing happened with the black, press Alt option key and then you will see which blacks are crushed. That means no information is there. So for the whites, I think I'm going to go somewhere around. There is fine. I lose a little bit of the logo, but it doesn't really matter. I don't have information there anyway. Uh, for the blacks, I'm gonna crush them a little bit more, maybe something like that. Now clarity, I don't really want to push clarity because otherwise, and I'm going to exaggerate so you can clearly see what's happening. The skin of the model gets very weird and I really need to do some heavy lifting in Photoshop and I don't want to do that. So I'm just gonna increase clarity a touch, maybe five points, four points, it's fine. Now, vibrance and saturation. I don't have a formula for it, but usually my way of working with it is I'm gonna bump up the vibrance so all the colors are roughly equally vibrant. And then, because I don't really like super vibrant photos or oversaturated photos, I'm gonna bake off on the saturation until I like what I see. And I wanna bake off the exposure just a little bit more yeah i think the exposure like this should be should be fine right tone curve 
Uh, I want to give to the photo that faded look. So I'm going to put, I'm going to set a point for the midtones. I don't want to change them. And then as I drag up the blacks, you can see I get that misty look. Now this is obviously exaggerated. So I am going to position this like like here okay uh, because I've done that I want to back off the blacks just a touch and increase the saturation a little bit and back to the tone curve I think I want to back off the blacks just a little bit like so okay That's it. HSL color, I don't play with it. Split toning, that's interesting. So usually I use these preset patches. And for the highlights, I'm gonna go, I don't want the image to look super warm. And for the shadows, some blue. You know, this is the classical teal orange look, and uh, but I don't want to overdo it. Details. Now, Lightroom usually, uh, let's go here in the eyes. Lightroom usually applies some sharpening by default, but with the masking all the way to zero, everything is gonna be sharpened. So even the noise and the flows of the photo. I don't wanna that, so click on Alt option and then I drag the masking slider until I see only the edges and the model and a few things. Those are the white parts of the photos are the ones that are gonna be uh, sharpened. I think usually it's between 80 and 95. In this case, I think this is fine and works fine. Noise reduction, I shot this picture ISO 100, so there is no really much noise here to bother. Um, the only noise that could be there, uh, it's there because I open up some shadows, so I think a 10 points of noise reduction should be fine and the color noise reduction, I leave it there. Lens corrections. Usually I only remove chromatic aberration and I leave whatever flows is coming from the lens. Um, transform, I don't need to transform anything. Now I'm gonna introduce some vignetting and I'm gonna crank down the amount so I can play around with the midpoint and the roundness and when I'm happy with it, I'm gonna go back and add a little bit of vignetting. Now a little bit because the lens already introduced vignetting by itself and I don't want to exaggerate that. And then I forgot the grain. Now here I usually zoom and I go in a place where there are highlights and shadows and I see what looks better for the image. Now I crank up the amount and I play with the size I don't really like super fine grain. So I think something like this. I play I play with the roughness. I like it in the middle. The size I think I like the default 125. And now this is helping to give some texture to the picture. And I think 15 is just fine. It's probably when it's going to be printed, it's not even going to be noticeable, so it's fine. So a quick before and after with the backslash. And I think I like what I see. The picture was definitely underexposed, so I like it. It's much more bright now and I like the way it looks now. Uh, and there you have it. If you like this video, but even if you don't like this video really, click the subscribe button and see you next time.